Good afternoon. Today we mark the feast of Acomius of Tabanisi. Say that five times fast. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple, on the throne of your majesty. Glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you, beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven. Glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Set us free, O God, from all false desires, vain ambitions, and everything that would separate us from your love, that like your servant Pacomius, we might give ourselves fully to a life of discipleship, seeking you alone and serving those whom you have given us to serve, through Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. A reading from Paul's second letter to Timothy. You then, my child, be strong in the grace that is Christ Jesus. And what you have heard from me through many witnesses, entrust to faithful people who will be able to teach others as well. Share in suffering like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving in the army gets entangled in everyday affairs. The soldier's aim is to please the enlisting officer. And in the case of an athlete, no one is crowned without competing according to the rules. It is the farmer who does the work who ought to have the first share of the crops. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks. Today's psalm is Psalm 16. We will read responsibly by full verse. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their libations of blood I will not offer, nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. As he is at my right hand, I shall not fall. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body shall also rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus said, no one can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, 
what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, what will we eat? Or what will we drink? Or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed, your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and the Lord's righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. The gospel of our Savior. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Pacomius was born in what we now call Egypt, the uh, upper Nile. No, the lower Nile, because the lower Nile is lower than the upper. Nile. That's what I mean. Further down the Nile than from Alexandria. He was born in that uh, sort of frontier area to pagan parents, and at an early age was involuntarily conscripted into the Roman army. Now, Normally, the Romans did not draft people into military service. You volunteered. Uh, but sometimes when wars and needs must, they would go out and actively recruit. So Pacomius was actively recruited and put on a barge and floated down the Nile um, to what we now know as the region around Alexandria and was received when he arrived at that transfer depot for soldiers to go off and be trained. He was received by a group of Christians who had taken it upon themselves to minister to the new recruits, to help them with the deprivations of their journey, to give them some comfort and some food and some refreshment. And he was deeply moved by their compassion and their care. So much so that when he completed his term of service in the Roman army, he decided to become a Christian, became baptized, and started to practice the faith around the same time. I love this. This is these little, it sounds like a like a like a David Lean movie being made. Around the same time, there were a series of people who went out into the desert uh, around Alexandria, around uh, those areas uh, of, of the upper Nile and began to live the Eremitic life. They became hermits, uh, practicing their faith as Christians in those desert places, the desert fathers and mothers, as we know them now. And he went off and studied literally at the feet of one of them, Anthony of Egypt, or Anthony the Great, and uh, was so moved by that, that he began to practice that Eremitic lifestyle but he was deeply aware as well that not everyone is resourced in the same ways to have the discipline, the resolve to embrace the privations of living in that intensely primitive and, and desultory existence. So he started to form small communities around the, the practice of prayer and that sense of both fasting and prayer and study and reflection that became what is now known as the Cenobitic tradition, as opposed to the Eremitic tradition. This was living in religious community. So much so that his ascetica, the rule of life that he wrote, which is older than the rule of St. Benedict, which we know pretty well in the West, is still practiced as the standard form in the Eastern Orthodox and the Eastern Church. So amongst his community, it began to grow. Um, he also did something that was interesting in that not everyone can rise to the high level of the hermit in terms of their practice. So he advocated that everyone be able to embrace the life as they were able. Some people had struggles with their health, others with age or some form of disability. So there were dispensations created in the community to care for them so they could be a part of the lifestyle. And on top of that, his own sacrifices, because he took on, for the most part, the administration of what we now would think of as a monastic community, as a monastery. And he actually saw to the needs of those he was leading. 
setting the tone and the tenor of what it would be like to be an abbot or an abbess, a uh, person charged with the care of a community and nurture in that way. Truly a remarkable figure. So remarkable, in fact, that he actually got an, a visit from Athanasius, who was the bishop in Alexandria at the time, who wrote a very famous biography of Anthony of Egypt and uh, attempted to ordain him. And he fled. <laughs> he actually ran away from that, that uh, role. And in fact, again, it said another tenor that a lot of monks in the Eastern faith are not ordained to the diacon or to the priesthood. Instead, they live this lifestyle, a sense called in a lay context. He received a visit from Basil Caesarea who took the ascetica and transferred that up to Byzantium as well, hence colonizing the Eastern church with that model of asceticism. But really also he is venerated in the context of being one who forges community. And you hear that reflected in the gospel story when we hear this image that Jesus offers of how we're not supposed to worry. I wanna ask, did anyone actually wake up this morning and succeed in not worrying between the time they opened their eyes and their feet hit the floor to this moment now in this sermon? Have you worried today? A little bit? I have several times. We do worry. But I think what it calls us to and what we're called to in remembering Pacomius is that what God gives us in a very profound way are an abundance of moments to take time to pause, excuse me, speaking of which, to pause, set down the concerns of the world and embrace the grace and peace of this moment we have with God in creation. As I was thinking about this sermon today, I was sitting at my desk right after evening prayer last night. And one of the things I love about the turning of the seasons, particularly in our backyard, is that the birds start to nest. And there was a particular wren outside who was singing God's praise. And one of the things I love about their song, particularly in the eventide, is that as they sing their tune, they don't repeat themselves. So it's like listening to a child making up a song as they go. And there's a joy and a, a gratitude for the day lived. And there's also a sense of peace as the eventide rises and we get to pause and reflect on what we've been given. So I'm gonna invite you as you ponder this gospel story and as you remember Pacomius, it's not so much about setting down the concerns of the world. Believe me, if you're a hermit or a Cenobite in the desert, you have concerns. You have concerns about finding enough water, about finding shelter from the sun during the day or from the cold at night, of sourcing enough food so that you don't waste away and God help you if you become injured or sick. There's a lot to worry about, even in that simple life. But to pause and embrace a moment to be surely and purely present to existence. That's the key that Pacomius was pointing to in his community. How can you get to a place where you're able to dispel the distractions so you can be fully present and fully mindful to here and to now? That's why he's relevant today as much as he was impactful and relevant in the fourth century. And for that, we give thanks. Amen. Open our eyes to the wonder of the life you have given us, the creatures with whom we share this planet, the endless horizons, the intricate working of our bodies, the tenderness and complexity of human relationships. Amen, Amen merciful God. Amen. Amen. Open our hearts to the ways that we have hurt each other, that we may turn toward each other in love and turn closer together to you. Amen. Amen. Merciful God. Amen. Amen. Open our ears to the cries of those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. We pray for those whose lives include hunger, financial insecurity, violence, whose homes are threatened by natural disasters, whose bodies ache with pain, and whose lives are in the balance. 
who live in war zones, poverty, or fear. Amen. Amen. Merciful God. Amen. Amen. Open our lives to the path of righteousness and align our vision with your vision of the world, created by you, redeemed by you, enlivened by your spirit, and reconciled to you at the last. Amen. Amen. Merciful God. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage, we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. God's peace. Peace. I appeal to you, my siblings in Christ, by the mercies of God, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. The Spirit of God be with you. Lift your hearts to heaven. Let us give thanks to God. It is right indeed to give you thanks, most loving God, through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, the firstborn from the dead, the pioneer of our salvation, who is with us always, one of us, yet from the heart of God. For with your whole created universe, we praise you for your unfailing gift of life. We thank you that you make us human and stay with us, given that we turn from you to sin. God's love has shown to us while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. In that love, dear God, righteous and strong to save, you came among us in Jesus Christ, our crucified and living Lord. You make all things new. In Christ's suffering and cross, you reveal your glory and reconcile all peoples to yourself, their true and living God. In the power of endless life, Christ is risen from the grave. His death has broken death and opened for us the new and living way. Christ is now our peace, our freedom, and our joy. In your mercy, you are now our God. Through Christ, you gather us newborn in your spirit, a people after your own heart, we entrust ourselves to you, for you alone do justice to all people living and departed. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Therefore, with saints and martyrs, apostles and prophets, with all the redeemed, joyfully we praise you and say, Holy, 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 God of mercy, giver of life, earth and sea and sky and all that lives, Declare your presence and your glory. All glory to you, giver of life, sufficient and full for all creation. Accept our praises, living God, for Jesus Christ, the one perfect offering for the world, who in the night that was he, he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many to forgive sin. Do this as often as you drink it to remember me. Therefore, God of all creation, in the suffering and death of Jesus, our Redeemer, we meet you in your glory. We lift up the cup of salvation and call upon your name. Here and now, with this bread and wine, we celebrate your great acts of liberation, ever present and living in Jesus Christ, crucified and risen, 
who was and is and is to come. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. May Christ ascended in majesty be our new and living way, our access to you, Father, and source of all new life. In Christ, we offer ourselves to do your will, empower our celebration with your Holy Spirit, feed us with your life, fire us with your love, confront us with your justice, and make us one in the body of Christ with all who share your gifts of love. Through Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, creator God. Amen. As Christ teaches us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Holy eternal majesty, holy incarnate word, Holy abiding spirit, bless you forevermore. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia.